Hello, how's it going? In the previous video, we sort of created our swap chain, a bunch of images which are used in rendering. We can't sort of use that directly though, because in Vulkan, you can't sort of access an image directly. We need what's called an image view, and that's basically a protocol for getting into the image. Actually, in reality, a full image in Vulkan sort of has a, a trio. It has an image and an image view, as well as image memory. And where that memory is created is important. Um, swap chain creation has handled that image memory for us, so that's fine. Um, and swap chain deletion will handle the image. Um, but for access and deletion, we need to make our own image view. A lot of rambling. Now, before I get into that, I've just noticed that I should probably refactor some of this code. Why not? We'll pay off our technical debt. So we've got these logging functions and they're really good. And I just started off using um, the debug logger, debug messenger in here. Um, but I've noticed that I've got a bunch of other logging functions. So config looks fine. Device. This bit log device properties. Let's put that in the logging function. Okay, and then the other thing is, I noticed that this uh, device is starting to get a little overloaded, this function. We should really be putting this swap chain stuff in its own section. So we'll make a swap chain file. Put them in there, that's looking great. Um, so we've got our structures defined there, and then we'll also grab our functions. Okay, so we've got that. But now we've got an issue. Is this Q family stuff? It's, um, oh yeah, logging as well. We can fix that pretty easily. We'll just go, let's fix some of the errors, but then it's this Q family stuff. It's a little bit funky. So here we have an issue. What am I going to do? Should I import device.h? Well, let me run into a problem because we sort of run the risk of doing circular imports if something imports something, but it's kind of in the same space. Do you know what I mean? All of this stuff is being used in the initializing space. But um, what I can do instead is we can get this uh, Q families and put them in their own space. I'm going to put them in uh, Vulcan Utilities. Because, yeah, they're a common structure which is used by things. And what we really should do is, is make a queues, a queues.h, but we won't do that yet. <laughs> um, then here, this find queue families, we can sort of grab that. Put that in the same namespace and then it's a good idea just to check while it's going on elsewhere okay so that's all well defined that is looking nice but then if we go back to our device we have got some errors where is it over here so we can go okay and then down here we will just go okay the namespace is vulcan utilities It's looking good. And down below we'll have the same issue. Sorry, sorry, probably just skipped that. Um, yeah, so I just go in and, and paste in the namespace and then we have those available to us. Awesome. 
All right, so now we'll go back to, where are we? Swap chain, and swap chain's probably got some errors as well. And we can just fix those by changing the namespace and yeah, okay, awesome. Um, so now to the actual focus of today, which is how to make swap chain image views, or rather how to make image views for the images on our swap chain. So down below, we have got a uh, vector of images. Okay, we want to make, so the swap chain allocates the memory and everything, creates those images. We want to get into those images and create image views for each of them. So our swap chain is actually becoming sort of a, a complex sort of composite thing. So I'm going to make a struct for it. And uh, we're going to have an image and an image view. And then we'll have a vector of those. Right, cool. So we're wrapping those resources together. Now, um, all right, that's all well and good. Let's go down and actually create those. So got images. Let me just set this uh, as we go. So we'll get those and then what we'll do is we will um, get the frames and uh, resize that. Then what we need to do is we need to jump into, uh, sort of loop through each of the images and set the image appropriately. Okay, cool. So that's setting the image, very straightforward. Um, what we then need to do is set the image view and again, this is the thing that we're finally getting to. Um, here's how that image view structure works. So we have a bunch of flags, which you can pretty much just leave. We could ignore those. Um, we need to send in an image that we're going to create the view for. We need to specify the view type. So what sort of image are we viewing? It turns out there's a bunch of different images, one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional, and so on. Uh, the format that the pixels are being stored in, so the pixel format, um, how the components are being, um, can be accessed. Um, so the most common method is to swizzle, which is say, um, to get the red component from a color, we would just access the first thing and nothing else. To get the second, the B, we'd get the second thing and nothing else. Okay, um, but, in some cases, those components may be sort of messed up a little bit. Anyway, we'll have a look at that. And then we have um, the sub resource range. So an image by itself may not be a simple image. It might be a mid map structure, in which case we will, you know, be viewing, uh, we'll have a different protocol to access the image based on the MIP map. Or we could have array images, like in medical imaging, you have for one image, it's a 3D, but it's sort of sliced. Anyway, but we'll be putting in very, very simple um, parameters for each of these. So let's create the uh, create info, which will specify the image view. Okay, so as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different uh, things, like cube maps, for instance. We're just going to go with a two-dimensional image. So, yeah, this is a bit, this is a little bit funky here. Um, if, for instance, you want to fix 
If we want to fix this to a certain value, then we can select one of these. Or, for instance, if we want to read the components in a different order. So, for instance, for some reason, for some reason, um, our image is storing it, I don't know, ARGB, then the red would be um, B or something, something like that. But anyway, we're not going to mess around with any of that. We're just going to pick things in the correct sort of order. So for each of these will be R oh, and alpha as well. Uh, so what I meant there was like, if we've got an image, but like the red component that we read, we want to actually be reading like the blue component of the, the image data for whatever reason, then we could set that there. I don't know why we would, but anyway. Yep, so we want to access the, there's a whole bunch of different things here. We want to access the color component of the image. Okay, the swap chain does not have any MIP mapping applied. So the base MIP level is zero and there is just one MIP level. Oh, uh, one. <laughs> and it's a, it's a simple, it's a simple image. So there's just one layer. It's not a uh, stacked image, so to speak. Right, so we've got the create info. What we can do is we can go create that image view. Set that up. That is looking good. So then the, the final bit is how do we use this in the engine? So we go back to the engine and now instead of a vector of frames, we're going to have a vector of, am I calling it swap chain frame? Am I just calling it frame? Yeah, it's a swap chain frame. Now we have an image, uh, sorry, an issue. And the issue is that uh, we are not importing this. We are importing it in the source code. And we should be importing it. So now that is, well, anyway, we'll update that in a second. But my, my point is we want to do kind of all of our concrete imports here. And we want to do our general imports up here. And um, this is an issue. And the issue is that if we, if we import swap chain here, then it, things will happen here, which will sort of import swap chain indirectly. And well, maybe anyway, it, it, it'll get messy. It'll get messy. We'll get all sorts of weird errors about, um, actually, let me, let me show you. Let me show you. So let's pretend that we're doing this the naive way. Okay, so we import swap chain. So now we can see that and we'll just get rid of that. And I'll, I'll just call this swap chain frames. Okay, awesome. And then here we'll just have an issue. So we'll go uh, swap chain. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so we'll run this now, see what happens. Hmm. And we get these ones. Okay, so choose swap chain extent uh, already defined. And this is weird. It says defined an engine.object, but that error happens in main.object, and that makes no sense because main is not doing much. It's just doing the engine stuff. And um, yeah, this is a problem. This is a problem. So what we need to do basically is to avoid those sort of circular imports is we don't do this. We'll import that there. That's fine. We'll just um, we'll make another one called frame and that frame will hold the structure.
Okay, so we'll go back to the swap chain. Now it's complaining. We'll just go um, port uh, include, sorry. Okay, it's looking good. No errors there. Then we'll go back to engine. All right, fingers crossed. Well, it wasn't making that error before. Oh, I think I forgot to set the format. That makes sense. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so we'll go get rid of that, go back to swap chain. Yeah. So that's basically just using this stuff down below. Okay, now this should work at least a little more than it did before. Yep, that's great. So it does its thing, it exits, it is complaining. And it's complaining that we, um, what does it say? Image view has not been destroyed. Okay. So it's just complaining that we need to destroy the image view, like I was saying. So we'll go to the cleanup down the bottom. And yeah, let's go here. Go. Okay, cool. Yes, we just call destroy image view and that does its thing. Now we get it, no errors. And yeah, so that is how we would sort of abstract our swap chain out to a custom structure. Storing the image and the image view. And like I said, in a general image, there would also be image memory backing that be stored there as well and how we sort of create an image view and destroy it yeah that's it hope you had fun and i'll see you again soon bye